What's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's your boy Kush back at it again with another Giants video. Um, just like all my videos have been for the past three weeks, this is the third in its own series, the pros and cons videos off of the previous week's game. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna come right out and say it. I, this is a tough one, man. This is a real tough one. Pros and cons from week three, 49ers at Giants, um, where the 49ers beat us 39 to nine, I think this is the final score was. I can't really remember. That entire game was a blur. That entire game was like a bad nightmare come to life. And uh, will the best thing to do would be to move on from it. But unfortunately, I have to talk about the pros and cons. And I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. Just thinking about it right now, you know, the way I usually do these videos, I actually don't write down the pros and cons list. I find it easier to just let my thoughts flow and then, you know, the pros and cons come to me as I go. Uh, that rhyme, don't hate the player, hate the game, bars. But with this one, I can legitimately think of zero pros and all I'm got in my head are cons. Now, I will say it is Tuesday. It is two games after, you know, two games. It is two days after the game, so I've calmed down a lot. Like, if I record this right after, or if I recorded it even yesterday, uh, the, the video would have a lot more cons than I think what I'm about to give. But, um, you know what, let's just get right into it. Let's just start off with con number one. Um, <laughs> the offense, but this is that's way too general. Let's get a little bit more specific. Uh, play calling. And this has been a con in both week one and week two as well. I am not a fan of Jason Garrett's play calling at this point. If this week it doesn't improve, it's safe to say that I'm just not a fan of the Jason Garrett offensive system, man. I've been, you know, I was so optimistic about it going into the season. I was so convinced that it was going to match up with the Giants talent so well and the players that we have here, especially when it came to running and run blocking specifically. And you know what? I won't really give Mark Colombo a con here because you know what? I'm sure he's doing his best to adjust and make the line better and really there's only so much you can do when the only proven thing on your line is a uh, aging right guard in Kevin Zeitler and what seems to be hopefully a future franchise left tackle in Andrew Thomas even Will Hernandez at this point is looking shaky not jumping off his bandwagon yet but I do have to acknowledge the fact that Will Hernandez doesn't look good so far in the season so I mean but with, with Jason Garrett from week one I was a bit annoyed with his play calling I didn't like the fact um, of how he ran the football that he didn't run it enough in week two you know albeit Saquon went down the way he ran the football was so weird it's like Devontae Freeman came in and not Devontae Freeman um who came in Deion Lewis came in and all of a sudden he's like oh I should probably run the football more and also he didn't really adjust you know his passing game and he didn't really use Darius Slayton same thing for week three Slayton was missing once again uh I'm gonna put it on Jason Garrett because I find it weird to put it on DJ DJ and D Slay, they had such a good connection together that I find it hard to believe he wouldn't be passing the ball to him. And then, I really don't think Darius Slayton is a bad receiver, and you have to be a bad receiver to not get open the entire game. So I'm not going to put it on Darius Slayton for him not being used because he's not getting open. And one thing that I noticed is that the Giants are probably one of the only teams in the league that doesn't scheme their wide receivers open. They expect their wide receivers to get open all by themselves. And while that is, you know, a realistic expectation to have, you don't do it for the entire game. You need to scheme them open at some point. So Jason Garrett's play calling, I'm just really not happy with. I think we only took one deep shot during the game and it, the game was already over by that point. So I'm, I'm going to put that out there. Um, second con offensive line it seems like they completely regressed this game they've always had a problem with run blocking since the beginning of the season and me saying the beginning of the season feels so weird because we're only four weeks into the season now but week one and two it was definitely a problem week three funnily enough the run blocking actually improved a little bit like when Devontae was in there I know his you know final stat didn't look as good as he actually looked in the game but it was better than what we had the first two weeks the run game was a little bit better um, we actually ran some more RPOs, which is another reason Jason Garrett's on this list. It took him three weeks to run some RPOs with Daniel Jones. But even though the run blocking improved a little bit, that's not much saying that we were the worst run, back, run blocking line in the league. We still are. The pass blocking, the pass protection somehow dropped like so immensely and it makes no sense. And in my previous video, in all my videos talking about the 49ers, I acknowledged the fact that you know, I wasn't one of these dudes that thought it was going to be easy. I, I still predicted them to win. I acknowledge the fact that they have great depth on their defensive line and they still have intact one of the best middle linebacking cores in the league. 
but that's what it is. It's great depth on the defensive line. That wasn't the starters, and somehow that depth completely wrecked our offensive line. They only got their sacks in the fourth quarter, I believe, but all game long, DJ was being pressured. All game long, this man was having, like, you know, hands in his face. He was being hit. It was crazy how bad the pass protection was this game, and it, that goes all around, even on my boy Andrew Thomas. The offensive line was just atrocious this game. Next con, I just mentioned him, Daniel Jones. Um, Daniel Jones, it's not looking good for him, considering what he's doing so far in this season but i'm still not off the train i'm still not gonna say tank for trevor and i'm still not gonna completely put all the blame on him because of his terrible supporting cast but this is specifically to speak on him right now he had a bad game you can't call this a good game you can't call this an average game this was a terrible game this was probably his worst game of his career daniel jones looked awful out there and don't even get me started on that pick which made no sense to me because it's very reminiscent of what happened last week in Chicago when he uh, when he threw the pick towards Evan Ingram. And before that, he had a pass that was batted down, almost picked off, that was intended for Sterling Shepard. This one is the same. It's once again to Evan Ingram. But this time, just like last week in Chicago, he was completely covered. And it almost looked like it was the same play call as well. Fred Warner was all over Evan Ingram on that route. I don't know why Daniel Jones made the decision to throw it to him. But it was a stupid decision and I'm not in the business of defending stupid boneheaded decisions. It was just a bad decision on top of an already bad game that he was having and that lays on him. It does lie at his feet. That's why he's on the cons list. I am going to stress though that it's not completely his fault. Like I said, the play calling was atrocious. Offensive line was atrocious. And now let's get into the weapons, which I'm not even sure if it should really be considered a con because considering he only really had Evan Ingram and uh, Golden Tate out there, Darius Slayton was nowhere to be seen. But the weapons, I, I know I said earlier that Slayton can't have been covered the entire game, but everybody else seemed to be covered the entire game, right? Whatever the case is, the weapons just can't get open and just can't get involved properly. I don't know what the reason is. You know what I mean? Slayton is a separate story because he's supposed to be the number one. He's supposed to, you know, be involved more. You know, Evan Ingram, Golden Tate, CJ Board, these guys, they're at least supposed to get open every once in a while. Like, come on now, man. At least do something. And then for the next con, let's switch over to the defensive side of the football really quickly, which had a terrible regression this game. But like I said in the reaction video, it's not completely their fault. I'm going to get you know, the devil's advocate portion out of the way real quickly because I know some people are going to get on me for the defense. The defense was worn out coming into the game. They were already mentally and physically worn out because they lost two games specifically because their offense couldn't capitalize on a great defense, what the great defense was doing for them. By the time halftime rolled around, this defense was already gassed and this defense was already done because they felt like the game was already lost and rightfully so because the offense couldn't capitalize on what the defense was doing. They held the 49ers down, I think, to like 16 points in the first half which was really good no not 16 i think it was less than that but it was good considering how bad the offense was performing and defense got gassed out mentally and physically this is why i'm gonna get on them even though you're gassed out like at least jesus christ play there for more than a half i feel like the defense just gave up in the second half and i can't completely blame them but i am still blaming them you know what i mean it's, it's very confusing for me to even put it into words and express it but i didn't like how they played in the second half of course, in the end, we gave up 39 points, and that, at the end of the day, does fall on them. You really gave up 39 points to Nick Mullins, you know what I'm saying? No George Kittle, no Debo Samuel, Nick Mullins, and, and, and what, Muhammad Sanu? And Jarek McKinnon, the third-round running back? And our rushing defense was already bad to begin with coming into this game. Somehow, some way on the rankings, it improved, I don't know. But the defense overall went from the second pass defense in the league to somewhere in the teens, went from the fourth overall defense in the league to somewhere in the teens, it dropped and it was a terrible performance by them. And the next con for me is going to be play calling from Patrick Grahams. And I noticed it during the game a lot of times. And I noticed it during the game last week against Chicago a lot of times. He plays, it's so weird because it's similar to uh, James Betcher last year in terms of secondary. Too, too many soft coverage plays, man. Like the, the cornerbacks are a little too far off of the receivers and they give them too much room to work with. So even when they catch it, they have a lot of space to turn around, juke, make some moves and even get more yardage. And that happened on a, like a third and eight play or a, ten, a third and 10 play down in the fourth quarter uh, where the Giants gave up 19 yards on a passing play because that was all yards after the catch because it was soft. It was, it was soft. I don't know if it was man or zone coverage, but just soft pass coverage. They gave the receiver room to work with and he got like an extra nine yards on top of the 10 he was supposed to get for the first down. And I saw that a lot this week 
a lot last week. Didn't like it. Very disappointing considering the massive game our past defense had against Chicago, which is just, I don't know, man. And then let's talk about the next con here. This is going to be a weird one, but low-key, I'm calling out our strength and conditioning and medical staff because we're getting a little too many injuries, bro. And um, I'm going to extend this even all the way back to 2017. Since 2017 to now, the Giants have been low-key injury prone. And this year, for sure, you know, we already know it was going to be more prone to injury just because of the COVID situation and the fact that players haven't had the time to get their bodies into shape like they usually do. But Jabril Peppers went down at the beginning of the game. We were already down Saquon from last week. We're already down Sterling Shepard. You know, many other depth guys. It's just like, what's up with the strength and conditioning? And what's up with the medical staff, man? Something is just not right. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because it's been a pattern since 2017. They need to either get some new people in there or the current staff needs to change what they're doing or something. But they're not preparing, preparing the players fully and not clearing them correctly to get into these games because these injuries are happening a little too often and i'm not very comfortable with it and that's really the cons i could come up with you know off the dome right now and of course you know each con has its own uh you could go even farther into it you know like let's say at the beginning the offense you could list off so many i kept it a little bit general because i didn't want this to be a 20 minute video and as i was speaking one pro did come up and it was the fact that this was rock bottom we could only go up from here you know, you could consider it a con as well, but literally there's nowhere else to go from this point in the season than up. I can't see a worse performance than that happening anytime this year. And if it does, I will truly, truly be sad and depressed, man, because that was the worst performance I've ever seen in my life. Even worse than the 51 to 17 loss against the Rams in 17, which is uh, funny because we're playing the Rams this week and the 17 and no loss to the Titans in 2018. But literally, I don't think we could get worse than this. I think we could only go up and that's what I have to take solace at this point as a Giants fan. I always got to look at the positive and it might be depressing, but that's where I'm at. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys all think. Uh, like, share, subscribe, tune in tonight for the stream and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.